I personally have more of a fondness for the DOS operating system, but in recent years I've found myself wanting to play around with the Apple II and 2GS just to kind of get a feel of other types of computers. But lo and behold, emulating it is actually not all that easy. But a couple of months ago, I found my respite inside of Mess. Hi, my name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to get the Apple II and 2GS games working through LaunchBox in Mess. So first things first, I'm going to have a link to this website in the description below. And this is the um, arcade category on the right there. You can see that there's a couple different categories. And if you click on the mess name, it'll bring you to this list. And here's where you can actually download mess still separated from MAME. Now, MAME has been combined with mess for quite a while now but personally i kind of like dealing with mess specifically separate from mame but if you are working with just mame this tutorial still applies in pretty much every facet of the tutorial but i personally still prefer mess separate so i'll go ahead and include the link down in the description below all you got to do is click on the most recent version of mess and then scroll on down then go ahead and download the x86 or the x64 versions depending on the version of windows you have once you have the updated version of mess downloaded if you have an older install that you were working with before like if you followed the previous tutorial that i had made with um, using mess go ahead and open up the old install and copy over your plugin ini your ui ini or your mess.ini and copy it over to the new install if you are downloading this for the first time go ahead and open up mess go on down to the configure options go to the configured directories and go to the roms path here so by default it only looks in the roms folder in the folder for whether you launched the exe but we also want it to be looking for our bios now you do need the software list of bios but if you download a MAME pack, then all of the BIOS should come in that MAME pack. And if you have downloaded MESS 177, go ahead and download MAME 177 and go ahead and download a MAME.177 ROM pack. You want to make sure that the versions usually stay matched up together. So go ahead and make sure that you add the MAME path to MESS. That way it's looking in the MAME ROMs folder for your bios now go ahead and open up launchbox let's go to tools manage emulators if you haven't added mess go ahead and add it name it whatever you would like and go ahead and browse to that exe if you already have it from a previous tutorial go ahead and change the emulator application path if you've downloaded an update Otherwise, go to the Associated Platforms tab and double click an empty space. Go ahead and add the Apple II and Apple II GS Associated Platforms. And that is II, not the number two. So that's Apple II and Apple IIGS. And the default command line parameters for Apple II, go ahead and double click an empty space here. Add Apple II EE space dash flop one. And for Apple 2GS, double click the default command line parameters box, add Apple 2GS space dash flop three. And there are a couple of different variants for the Apple 2 and 2GS, but I went ahead and chose the Apple 2EE for the Apple 2E enhanced version. And I went ahead and just chose the Apple 2GS base BIOS. So this right here is the BIOS name and this is the parent BIOS. So for Apple 2EE to work, you need Apple 2EE and Apple 2E.zips in your MAME ROMs folder. But again, like I said, if you downloaded a, a MAME ROM pack, it should come with all the BIOS you need. And for the Apple 2GS, it's just using the Apple 2gs.zip bios a little bit of extra explanation because this does change depending on what kind of file extension you are loading so there is a giant list of command line settings that i've gotten 
out of a mess and the link to this will be in the description below if you would like to take a look at it as well but i just controlled f apple 2e and you can see here a list of commands we obviously use the default command line for apple 2e to call that we are emulating the system apple 2e and we are using the flop one to denote that we are using the floppy disk one and these are the list of file extensions that you can put, I believe, in the floppy disk one slot. For the Apple II GS, I have .2MG file extension games, so that's why I have the flop3 command here in the default command line parameter box. So if you are using .do, .dsk, .bin, .po file extension games, you can actually do flop1 or flop2. But if you have .img, .image, .2img, .tmg, .fdi, that sort of thing, if you have uh, differing file extensions, then go ahead and use the flop3 as this chart kind of shows you. Uh, sorry if that's a, a little confusing. So essentially you gotta match your file extension of your games to the command line that you use here. So that's a little bit of an explanation of why we have the default command line parameters set up the way we do. So essentially we are calling Apple 2 EE, which is the BIOS that we are using to call the, the system Apple 2. And we are using the dash flop one because we have a file extension that fits within the flop one category. Same with the Apple 2GS, we're calling the Apple 2GS BIOS. And we're using the dash flop three because we have the file extension games that fall under the flop three category. Again, I'm sorry if that's a little confusing. Mess is, huh, pardon the pun, a little bit of a mess. But now let's go ahead and import our games. So let's go to tools, import, ROM files. So we're going to click next, add files. We're going to navigate to where we have our games downloaded. We're going to click on a game. We're going to press control A to highlight them all. And as you can see, I have .dsk, file extension games. This is the Tosec ROM pack. And we're going to click open. And then we're going to click next. For the platform for imported ROMs, click the drop down and go down to the Apple II section there. Click next. Mess should automatically pop up in this drop down menu since we set the associated platforms list correctly. And if it doesn't, just go ahead and click the drop down and select mess. And then we're going to click next. Use the files in their current location. And we're going to go ahead and check the Launchbox Games database and Emu Movies for all the appropriate metadata and media that I can find. And we're going to download it all. We're going to keep clicking next until we get to the parsing list section. And we're going to let it parse through our list of games. If a game is on this list that you don't want to import currently, go ahead and click on the entry and click delete. Or if you would rather rename something, go ahead and double click the name category there to rename it to something else if you would like. Once you're finished, go ahead and click finish. And it'll import all your games and download all of the relevant metadata. Go ahead and do the same thing that you just did for the Apple II, but for the Apple II GS. And when it says choose a platform, go ahead and select Apple II GS instead of Apple II. And there we go. We should be able to boot our games. So I do have the file names showing up on the right for a reason, because these disks usually have two sides to them. And I'm loading up Gettysburg here. Uh, since this is a PC and not a console, for the most part in MAME or MESS, you just press tab to open up the UI when you're in game. But right now I'm pressing tab and nothing's loading up. Because it's a PC, it doesn't let you do most of the shortcuts from the keyboard. Since it's a PC, it assumes that you're going to need all your keys. So instead for... Um, keyboard shortcuts to work you have to press scroll lock and this keyboard emulation status screen will pop up and once it says partial emulation you can go ahead and press your keyboard buttons to get into the ui so with the partial keyboard emulation set up you can go ahead and press shift f7 for example to then select position to save to you can press one on your keyboard to save the state successfully 
The reason why I bring that up specifically is because of this screen here. Insert the backside of the game disc. And the reason why I bring up the save state option is for one reason. And I didn't test this, but if you go to the file manager, when you press tab, and it says flop one here where it says floppy disk, I believe I can, I can change the disk to the side B ROM so I can continue uh, the game. It wants me to flip the disk. But personally, since I made a save state, I just go ahead and open up the side B ROM. And it's gonna say, uh-oh, wrong side of the disk, boot side one. But we're gonna turn on partial keyboard emulation. We're gonna press F7. And then we're gonna press the one key to load our save state. It's gonna load our save state from the other disc on this disc and we get to continue the game. And I personally find this method a lot faster, saving a state from side A and then loading the state on side B, I personally find a lot faster. If you press tab and go into like the file manager layout, like you can probably swap it through here, but like you're gonna have to go through your, 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 your list you can use page down and page up or you can just type in the words to you know get there a little bit faster but this is still a hell of a lot slower than just using save state and save load so personally i find that method the most my most favorite method and if you are on the latest version of launchbox multi-disc games have been merged together now. So when you import games, uh, this would actually have two entries normally, disc one of two and then disc two of two. But since uh, one of the recent updates, uh, it has merged them. Now there are very specific rules for merging of multi-disc games. They have to be in parentheses or brackets and it has to have, you know, disc one, disc two, disc three, disc one of two, disc two of two, disc DISC one and any kind of co those combinations. Then Launchbox will uh, automatically and smartly just combine them. So you can right click a game and see disc one and disc two. Okay, with your games imported, let's go ahead and test a game. Let's go ahead and test Arkanoid here. And there we go. The Apple 2GS is going to be looking a little bit different from compared to the Apple 2, for example. Uh, it may pop up. I I know I tried loading a game in like a like a desktop system, like loaded. It was a uh, it did some weird things and then it had like two um, executables that I had to pick from or one to pick from of the two. And so it's a little bit different than uh, Apple two is a little bit. And I would say that uh, disk swapping would be the same with the save states, at least it would be as easy. So uh, do keep that in mind. Things are a little bit different, but there you go. That's how you get the Apple two and two GS emulated and <laughs> don't uh or ignore my horrible yeah i don't think the controls are working but that's not the point oh it's using the mouse that's why well there you go don't use a key don't use a key arrow keys when you could use your mouse oh hey look i never said i was great at games all right <laughs> But there you go guys, that's how you get the Apple 2 II and 2GS up and running through Launchbox in mess. I know it's a little bit convoluted, a couple of extra things that you may not be used to, so if you have any questions, please leave your comment in the comment section below. Jason and myself are more than happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. Remember Freaks and Geeks to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!